the rules. Senator Warnock, Mr. Walker, you will each have 60 seconds for opening statements and 60 seconds to answer each question. If there's a follow-up or rebuttal, you will have 30 seconds. When time's up, you'll hear this bell. Each candidate will also have 60 seconds for a closing statement. And with that, it is time to get underway. Tina and Buck, the floor is yours. Leland, thank you very much. Senator Warnock, Mr. Walker, good evening to you both. We appreciate you being here, and we look forward to hearing from you both tonight. And for those of you at home that are following along, we'd like for you to use the hashtag G-A-S-E-N debate. Once again, it's hashtag G-A-S-E-N debate. Good to see you as well, gentlemen. We begin tonight with opening statements. A card draw determined who will go first. Mr. Walker, we will begin with you. You have 60 seconds. First, I'd like to acknowledge my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm one of seven kids, born and raised in Wrightsville, Georgia. My parents taught me about faith, family, education, and the love of country. They also taught me about a good work ethic. And because of that, I found the America's dream. But this race ain't about me. It's about what Raphael Warnock and Joe Biden had done to you and your family. Tonight, he's going to try to sweet talk it that he's doing a good job but his record speaks for itself. I'm here to tell you that they raised your taxes, gave you high inflation. They even put men in women's sports. And I want to let you know, the referee or whatnot, we give him six more years, think what he's going to do. So I'm here to fix it. Mr. Walker, thank you. Senator Warnock, we turn now to you for your opening statement. You have 60 seconds. Well, thank you so very much, and hello, Georgia. It's so wonderful to be back here in my hometown. Now, I know that we're in a debate tonight, but really I come with a deep heart filled with gratitude, uh, probably because I grew up about a mile from here in the Caton Homes housing projects. I'm one of 12 children in my family. Clearly, my preacher parents read the Bible, be fruitful and multiply. When I think about the arc of my life, the short distance and the long distance from there to here, I know that only in America is my story possible. My family taught me the importance of hard work and how to build the beloved community that Dr. King used to talk about, and I brought that spirit to the Senate. At the end of the day, this race is about who's ready to represent Georgia in the U.S. Senate. I think that choice is clear, and I look forward to having that discussion tonight. Thank you, Senator Warnock. Gentlemen, we have a lot to get to this hour. So we will start tonight with the most important issues facing Georgia voters. Our next star, Emerson College, The Hill poll shows the economy, threats to democracy, and abortion access are the top three issues. We're going to begin tonight with the economy. Everyday Georgians are struggling. They're struggling to pay for food, gas, child care, housing. This week, the inflation rate continues to rise. Mr. Walker, we're going to start with you. You've been openly critical, blaming President Biden and the Democrats for inflation and for the economy. If elected, what is one idea, one idea that you would champion to reduce inflation? We ask you to be specific. You have 60 seconds. Well, first of all, you have to blame this administration and Senator Warnock because within two years, this inflation has gotten worse. They uh, cut our energy uh, independence. They also raised taxes. And at the same time, they directly spending all our money. So he will sit here tonight and say that he's doing a good job for us. And you ask me, what is one job I would do to uh, help the inflation? First of all, we got to become independent, uh, energy independent again. And the reason why, we're going to our enemies to ask for gas and oil. And that puts us not just in a inflation problem, but it puts us in a national security problem. And I think that's something that I think Senator Warnock need to realize. And he mentioned that he grew up here in Savannah with 12 siblings, with 12 siblings. Well, in this area, most people live paycheck to paycheck. And we have inflation the way he's brought inflation on. How in the world can you buy grocery or gas for your family? A follow-up question to that, Mr. Walker. Most economists say that cutting government spending is the first step in economic recovery. I would want to ask you, would you consider cutting military funding or spending on social services to accomplish this goal, and you have 30 seconds. I would not uh, think about cutting military spending because first, I believe in peace through strength. Right now, we're at a brink of war 
And I think right now with Senator Warnock, who he and Joe Biden, uh, they don't show any strength. And we have to protect this country. And we, I said it early on, right now, because we're giving our energy, energy up to uh, enemies that don't like us, we have to be ready for war. This is not, uh, this is not a playground. So we have to be ready for war right now. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Senator Warnock, since President Biden has taken office, inflation has reached levels that we haven't seen in 40 years. You've supported nearly every piece of legislation that this administration has pushed through Congress. Do you take any responsibility for the financial hardships currently that Georgians are facing? And you have 60 seconds. There's no question that people are feeling pain at the grocery store, at the pump, at pharmacy counters. And while we are paying record prices, a lot of our corporate actors are seeing record profits in the oil and gas industry and in the pharmaceutical industry, which is why I stood up for ordinary, hardworking Georgia families time and time again. I passed the single largest tax cut, contrary to what my opponent is suggesting, for middle and working class families in American history. And we passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which had two of my provisions. One caps the cost of prescription drugs for seniors so they don't have to choose between buying medicine and buying groceries. And one caps the cost of insulin. He said he would not have voted for the Inflation Reduction Act. And I think he should tell the people of Georgia why he thinks they should have expensive insulin and why the pharmaceutical companies should be able to charge us whatever they like. Well, first of all, may I respond? You know, I believe in reducing insulin, but at the same time, you got to eat right because he may not know, and I know many people that's on insulin, and unless you have an eating right, insulin is doing you no good. And so you have to get food prices down, and you gotta get gas down so they can go get insulin, and you continue to pat yourself on the back, but right now, families are starving. Right now, families are hurting, and they're hurting because of the bills and the laws you're passing right now. Senator Warnock, I'll give you an opportunity for a Listen, rebuttal. I, I, I meet people all the time in my church who are trying to manage their diabetes. I've been there when they've gotten the news that they've got to get an amputation. And I think we're hearing from my opponent tonight that it's their fault that prices of insulin are being gouged. I, I don't think it's their fault. I think it's the fault of these pharmaceutical companies. Insulin's been around 100 years. The patent was sold for $1. They're engaged in price gouging, and too many people in Washington think they work for the pharmaceutical companies. I work for the people of Georgia. Well, he's in Washington. Right. Can I finish? I work yeah. for the people of Georgia. Yeah, but you're in Washington. And that's yeah. why I stand you're up for them every you're single in Washington day. And you're the leader. Mr. Walker, you're let's, let's move leader. forward if we can. A follow-up question to you, Senator, in 30 seconds. Georgia need help right now. In your opinion, right. is the answer uh, another stimulus check, or is there a, a better option out there to deal with this right now? We passed the Inflation Reduction Act. He's already told you he would vote against it. It didn't he's, already, he's, he's, he's already told you that he doesn't believe in capping the costs of prescription drugs for people like my 84-year-old mother. No, I don't think they should have to choose. Let's let him talk. Yes. We'll get a second. I, I don't think she should have to choose between buying medicine and buying groceries. And that's why I've stood up for her, and I've stood up for hardworking families every single day, and I've stood against the corporations that are being bad actors. They're seeing record profits in the middle of a pandemic. And Who exploits a pandemic? General, we need to move on to our next topic in the interest of time. So that's election integrity. Tina, it's all yours. All right, Buck, thank you. Senator Warnock, this question is for you. You have said the new Georgia voting laws implemented after the 2020 election create many obstacles for underserved communities. Yet there was record turnout in Georgia in the primary this may according to research done by the brennan center for justice the african-american vote grew approximately 50 percent from 2018 to 2022's primaries senator can you explain how the law negatively impacts minority votes you have 60 seconds sir so i have spent my whole career long before coming to the senate fighting for voting rights because i believe that a vote is a kind of prayer for the world we desire for ourselves and for our children. We register people to vote in my church. And in the Senate, I've stood up for democracy because that's the framework in which we get to fight for all of the things we care about. There's no question that SB 202 makes voting harder, and that is the intent. And the fact that many of our voters are overcoming this hardship doesn't undermine that reality. 
They've made it harder for folks to use the drop boxes. They've shortened uh, the registration times. Folks are saying, you know, you shouldn't have to, not you should be able to get food or water in a, in a line. I, I think the question is more fundamental than that. Why the line so long in certain communities and not others? And so I just want to encourage Georgia voters to keep showing up. Don't let anybody take your voice. Don't let anybody take your vote. It took too much to get here, and I'm honored to represent you in the United States Senate. Senator Warnock, thank you. Mr. Walker, we move to you now. In 2020, Georgia became the epicenter for questions on voter fraud. We'd like to hear your thoughts in 60 seconds. Did President Biden defeat former President Donald Trump in 2020? Again, sir, you have 60 seconds. Well, first of all, I need to mention that he said that uh, SB202, really it made it easier to vote and harder to cheat. And she mentioned that uh, more people turned out for the primary. So you gotten good at in Washington not answering that question, because that was the question she asked you. And did President uh, Biden win? That President, is the Biden question. Won, President Biden won and Senator Warner won. That's the reason I decided to run. Because we need a change in Washington. We need leaders that's gonna stand up to uh, foreign leaders. We need people that's gonna stand up for people in Georgia. Because Senator Warnock, he went to Washington, but he forgot about Georgia. And I want to stand for the people of Georgia. He just mentioned he's standing for the people of Georgia. But can you tell me why he voted with Joe Biden 96% of the time if he was standing for Georgia? That tells you that he's for Joe Biden, I'm for Georgia. Mr. Walker, thank you. Now, before we move on, gentlemen. I'd, I'd like to respond to that. I will give you that opportunity, it, sir. It, it is. I will give you that opportunity, Senator. You have 15 seconds to respond. It, it is very clear that my opponent would rather be running against anybody except me. But I'm either he, to run there, there are only two people are gonna, who are going to sit in this seat, either me or my opponent. And I think this race is about who's ready to represent the people of Georgia, and I'm thinking about them every single day. But if he cut from the same cloth at 96% of the time, I'm running he and Joe Biden because they're the same. Gentlemen, look. Gentlemen, we are moving on now. This is this next question. This is a yes or no response. And this is for both of you, Senator Warnock, yes or no, regardless of who wins in November. Will you accept the outcome? Yes. And Mr. Walker, regardless of who wins yes. in November, will you accept the outcome? Yes. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, Buck, over to you. Thank you, Tina. We turn now to the topic of abortion. We're going to start with you, Mr. Walker. A week before this debate, a former girlfriend made public accusations saying you paid for an abortion and that you encouraged her to have another. In an ABC News interview uh, this week, you said that the accusations are, quote, all lies. For the voters watching tonight, can you explain the circumstances surrounding these claims? You have 60 seconds. Well, as I said, that's a lie. And, you know, one most thing I put, I put it in a book. One thing about my life is I've been very transparent. Not like the senator, he's hid things. But at the same time, I said that's a lie. And on abortion, you know, I'm a Christian. I believe in life. And I tell people this, Georgia is a state that respects life, and I'll be a senator that, that protects life. And I said that was a lie, and I'm not backing down. And when you have Senator Warnock, people that would do anything and say anything for this seat, but I'm not gonna back down because this seat is too important to the Georgia people for me to back down right now. You've been vocally pro-life, supporting a ban on abortions without exceptions. Would you support a complete ban on a national level? Well, first of all, see, that's not true either. I said I support a uh, heartbeat bill, and I said I support the Georgia heartbeat bill because that's the bill of the people from Governor Kemp. And I said that has exceptions in it. I said, I'm a Christian, but I'm also representing the people of Georgia, and that's who I represent. So what the people of Georgia stand for, I'm going to stand with them. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Senator Warnock, you said repeatedly that the exam room is too small for the patient, her doctor, and the U.S. government. We're asking you to take a clear position right now. Do you believe there should be any limitations on abortion set by the government? And you have 60 seconds. I think that the women of this country and the women of this state woke up one summer morning and a court protection that they've known for 50 years was taken from them by an extremist Supreme Court. And I stand where I've said I stand in the past, that a patient's room is too narrow and small and cramped a space for a woman, her doctor, 
and the United States government. We are witnessing right now what happens when politicians, most of, most of them men, pile into patients' rooms. You get what you're seeing right now. And the women of Georgia, the women of Georgia deserves a senator who will stand with them. I trust women more than I trust politicians. May I, may I respond? Very quickly, Nicole. You know, it is, and I heard about him there. I heard he was, he was, he was a neat talker. But did he not mention that there was a baby in that room as well? And also, did he not mention that he asked him, that he asked him the taxpayer to pay for it? So he bringing the government back into the room. So he's not talking about that. So when he mentioned that, it's like I've not seen too many pastors that would say that statement. I, 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 give you a I, I am a pastor. I'm a man of faith. And I have a profound reverence for life and a deep <clears throat> respect for choice. And because I have such a profound reverence for life, it's one of the reasons why I've stood up to address this issue of maternal mortality in our country. We lead all of the Western nations on that front, and black women are three to four times more likely to die even when they have the insurance and the income. Now, that's something government could actually do something about. And I joined with Marco Rubio of Florida to pass a bill to address maternal mortality. The women of Georgia have a clear choice as we're watching women die. Do you want a senator who wants to control your life, or do you want a senator who wants to save your life? Well, I want to save your life. Well, what's funny, I, mean, I, have, to, so I have to respond to this. Very quick. Because he told me black lives matter. And if you think about it, Senator, in Atlanta, Georgia, there's more black baby that is aborted than, uh, than anything. So if black lives matter, why are you not protecting those babies? And instead of <laughs> aborting those babies, why are you not baptizing those babies? Mr. Warnock, or Senator Warnock, we'll give you a chance to respond to that. I, I think the women of, of Georgia have a clear choice. He says no exceptions, even in the case of rape, incest, or the life of the mother. I think that's extreme, is out of touch with Georgia, and I intend to do the work that senators can do. See, he didn't Mr. read the heartbeat heart 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 bill, though. Wait, he didn't read the heartbeat heart bill. That there is exceptions for that in the heartbeat bill, so when he I made the statement that is untrue, that we need and to I do on. respect okay, that, we've got a lot to, to get into now. A follow-up question for you, Senator Warnock. Uh, we ask that you take a listen to something that you said at a rally just a couple of weeks ago. So women, I trust women and their wisdom and their ability to sit with their own doctor. Right. And if they choose, to sit with their pastor. Right. And to pray about that and let their own conscience guide them. Yes. Even God gave us a choice. Even God gave us a choice. Can you clarify what you meant by that? You have 30 seconds. Oh, I, I think it's, it's, it's self-explanatory. God gave us a choice. And I respect uh, the right of women to make a decision. Uh, these are medical decisions. Uh, they're deeply personal. Uh, women find themselves in a range of circumstances. And this issue has been far too politicized. And we're witnessing right now the chaos that ensues as a result of that. And women right now who may be facing a miscarriage in some cases are wondering what will happen and how will they have to explain that? I think that's deeply problematic. There are enough politicians piling into the rooms of patients, and I don't plan to join them. But just to clarify, in your opinion, God gave us a choice in regards to abortion. But I, I, it, it is apparent that God has given us a range of choices, and the people of Georgia have a choice right now about who they think should represent them in the Senate. And, and may I have to respond? Mr. Walker, we do have to move on to our next this topic. Be very short, very short, because he's correct. God gave us a choice, but also within the Bible, if you read the Bible more, God said, choose life. In the Bible, it says, I give you a choice. It says like Adam and Eve had a choice, but they chose death. Very and quick, God Walker, said, very quick. Mr. Walker, we need to I, move I, forward. I think he wants to arrogate to politicians more power than God has. All right, gentlemen, thank you. We're going to have to move on to our next topic, okay? <laughs> Tina? We are moving on, gentlemen, on the next topic, and it is about student loans. We turn to Christian Dent, a college student, and Next Star News Nation viewer from Locust Grove, Georgia. As a college student at the University of Georgia, me and my peers are often faced with confronting the rising costs that come with obtaining a college degree. 
In the United States Senate, will you support further forgiveness of student loan debt? And if so, how will you implement it in the United States Senate on a federal level? Our right, thanks to Christian for that question. Senator Warnock, your answer, please, in 60 seconds. I wouldn't be standing here tonight if it weren't for low interest student loans and Pell Grants. And in the years since I've graduated, that path has gotten harder. I ran into a couple on a flight and uh, they wrote a note for me. They were with their one-year-old son. They said, whatever you do, please do something about this student debt. The mother said, I borrowed $35,000. I paid back 20,000. I still owe 30,000. And that's why I pushed the president to do student debt relief. He did $10,000, and with my urging, he did $20,000 for folks with Pell Grants. I think it was the right move. It will spur entrepreneurship, home ownership. It helps kids in technical schools and vocational schools, not just four-year colleges. But we need reform. We, we shouldn't be doing this again 10 years from now. And I'm working right now on the kind of reform we need because college is outpacing uh, the price of everything else in our economy. A follow-up for you, sir. Why do you believe this should be done through executive action instead of Congress? And also, how would this be funded? You have 30 seconds. The president has already moved to do student debt relief. And um, there's additional relief for folks like me who, when they got student loans, uh, were Pell Grant eligible. But there's no question we need reform in the system so that we can get the cost of college underway. We don't find ourselves here again. Uh, and, and that's my position. Thank you. Senator Warnock, thank you. Mr. Walker, to repeat Christian's question, will you support further forgiveness of student loan debt? And if so, how would you implement it? Well, first of all, uh, you can see that. seconds, sir. I yes, apologize. First of all, you can see that Senator Warnock has gotten good at being in Washington because you asked the question, why did Congress not do it instead of the president doing an executive order, which is what should have been done. And as I was traveling around the state of Georgia, I talked to people. Some people that wanted to go to college, they couldn't. So they ended up going and working on father's farm. Some military wanted to go to college, they didn't. So he went to the military and may have lost an arm. So this is not right. Georgia people say it's not right. And, I, and I, they say it's, un, it's unfair. First of all, how can you transfer someone debt who owe it to someone that don't owe it? And also, Senator Warnock brags about making $400 billion that now the taxpayer, all you in the audience, got to pay for. You got to pay that debt. And I didn't co-sign for anyone's loan. I hope no one out here co-signed for anyone's loan, because I didn't co-sign for anyone's loan. And it's not right. It's not fair. We're continuing with a follow-up for you now, Mr. Walker. College tuition is skyrocketed, 175% over the past 20 years. What will you do to stem the cost of higher education going forward? Well, first you of have all, 30 seconds. First of all, what you should do is uh, get rid of federal funding of any college that raises their costs. Get rid of, get rid of federal, federal funding of any college that raises their costs. That's the first thing that you should do. So that is what you would do. Yeah, that's we're, what we're I would do. What any, any college that raised their costs, I'll get rid of any federal funding that they're going to get. Thank you. You know, I find, on. I, I find it interesting I, I, that, I, that folks are Senator offended Warnock, by... Senator Warnock, I, yes. I, I'm going to give you this one. I'm going to give you a you. pass for 15 seconds. I, I will be very brief, I promise. Very brief. It, it, it's interesting to me that, that, that folks who have been crying about the student debt relief haven't said anything about uh, multi-billionaire corporate entities who've gotten PPP loans. I, 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 I wonder why Mr. Uh, uh, We're going to move on. We're that. moving on. Thank but you. Yes, Thank you, you Senator Warnock. Your time is well. up. Mr. Walker, we are moving on. Yes, We're going to move on to minimum seven. wage, gentlemen. We have yes. a lot to get through yes. tonight. We've made that clear at the top of the hour. Yes. So let's get as many questions as we can in because Georgia voters want to know where do you stand on these issues? They have to make a decision. Let them know tonight. Buck? Thank you, Tina. Now, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, 14% of Georgians live in poverty. The federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour, a number that has not increased since 2009. Let's do this by a simple showing of hands. Raise your hand if you support a federal minimum wage. 
Okay, well, Mr. Walker, you did not raise your hand, so I'd like to ask you, first of all, why not, and what would you do to help struggling Georgians? Well, when you say a federal, um, I think right now, and he said that I want a federal government. No, he wants a federal government to run your life. Right now, I think you have to work with different corporations and see just where they can pay. There are some companies right now, and he should know this, after getting the All-Star game moved out of Atlanta, they destroyed a lot of small businesses. So those small businesses couldn't pay $15, $20 an hour. So they have to pay what they're capable of paying. So to mandate a federal uh, federal uh, fee that they have to pay hourly wage, no, I, can't, I couldn't approve that. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Uh, Senator Warnock, you did not raise your hand, so uh, why not, and what would you do to help well, struggling Georgia? I, I, I believe in the dignity of work, and I believe in the dignity of workers. I watched my dad work really hard to take care of his family, and I've seen what we call essential workers, these folks who are on the front line, stand up for us in the midst of the pandemic. We call them essential workers. They deserve an essential wage and essential benefits. In other words, workers deserve to participate in the prosperity that they are creating for others. And so I've been a part of this conversation around the minimum wage. I think people need a livable wage. And some of that is being addressed right now in this strong labor market. So I'm willing to work with folks in the corporate community as well as the labor community to, feel that, to, to figure out how we get to a good place. But there's no question people deserve to participate in the prosperity that they're creating for others. They deserve a livable wage and they deserve benefits. Thank you, Senator Warnock. We're gonna to move to our next topic, Tina. And that topic is crime and violence. In June, Congress passed the first bipartisan legislation to combat gun violence in 30 years. According to a Pew Research poll released in July, 78% of Americans think the new gun law will do little or nothing to reduce gun violence. Senator Warnock, I turn to you first. As the number of shootings in Georgia and across the nation continue to rise, what should be done? What should the next step be to solve this issue? You have to answer this question, sir, and I give you one minute. Well, I'm glad that we finally passed the first gun safety law in 30 years. And we did that on a bipartisan basis. I believe that this law will indeed save lives. And I'd like to see us work and see what we can achieve beyond that on a bipartisan basis. Uh, my heart goes out when I see the kinds of tragedies that we're witnessing all across uh, our state, all across our country. And it's the reason why I have passed legislation to support law enforcement I passed uh, the largest investment in the COPS program in a decade. Uh, I introduced legislation called Invest to Protect that's endorsed by the sheriffs of Burke County and Scriven County because, because it supports some of our smaller law enforcement entities. So we've got to stand up with law enforcement, but we've also got to create opportunity. Senator Warnock, thank you. Mr. Walker, we're posing the same question to you, <clears throat> sir. In one minute, what should the next step be to solve gun violence? Well, first of all, uh, you know, any uh, law or bill passed that will affect anyone's Second Amendment, I'm not going to stand for and I won't support. But third, uh, to hear Senator Warnock talks about supporting law enforcement is sad because he's called them names. And because of the name caller he's done, the morale is down, recruitment is down, only because of what he's done. He's empowered criminals to think they're better than the police. And because he believes in no cash bail, and releasing prisoners, he don't protect the border, fentanyl is coming to this country, and also into Atlanta. 70% of the drugs coming from the border goes to Atlanta, Georgia. And he talks about the police. Now I have more sheriff that has endorsed me than anyone running in, in, in Georgia right now. And I even have some sheriffs here They've endorsed me because they know I have their back. They're going to have my bias. So to listen to him say that after calling him a name, I think it's a disgrace. Mr. Walker, thank you. I have a follow-up now for both of you. I, 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 think, I think I ought to be able to respond to that. I will give you the opportunity, 15 seconds but to we, respond, we, Senator we, Warnock. We will see time and time again tonight, as we've already seen, that my opponent has a problem with the truth. I, I, and, and, 
not just because she said something that doesn't mean it's true. I have supported our police officers. I've called them and I've prayed with their families, like those officers lost in Cobb County when they were killed, doing what police officers routinely do. You can support police officers as I've done through the COPS program, through the Invest to Protect program, while at the same time holding police officers, like all professions, accountable. One thing I have not done, I've never pretended to be a police officer, <laughs> and, and, and I've, never, I've never threatened a shootout with the police. And now I have to respond to that. We are, we are, we are no, moving no, no, no. on, gentlemen. I have to respond to that. And you know what's so funny? I am with, with many police officers. <laughs> and at the same time... Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, no, 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 Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, no, 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 no. Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, Walker excuse me, truth. Mr. Walker. When please, he said out of respect, truth, I, truth I, I need here. to let you know, Mr. Yes. Walker, you are very well yes. aware of the rules tonight. Yes. And you have a prop. Yes. That is not allowed, sir. Yeah. I ask you to put that prop away. Well, it's not a prop. It, this it, is real. And he said, I but, have a prop. But I never it is considered a prop, Mr. Mr. Walker. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Yes. You're very well aware of the rules, aren't you? Well, he, Are you aware of he the brought rules? up the truth. Well, Let's talk about the truth. Thank you for putting that yes. prop away. And as a matter of fact, we still have a lot to get to and we are not going to continue this we're going to follow up with a question and this is according to the cdc homicide is the leading cause of death for african-american youth mr walker in 30 seconds why do you believe this is happening and what would you do to stop it well what i would do is hold people accountable which is center why not not do it believing in no cash bail no accountability that is a problem People must be accountable for their action. And the truth lies with Senator Warnock because he said he was going to Washington to represent Georgia. He went to Washington to represent Joe Biden. That's the reason we're in the mess we're in today because he represents Joe Biden and not the truth for Georgia. Senator Warnock, this follow-up for you, same question. What do you believe homicides among African-American youth is growing? Why are those homicides growing, sir, and how do we stop it? Well, it's heartbreaking. And I've seen this up close as a pastor. I've presided over some of these funerals. I've met with young people. And um, we have to have rules and laws in the society, which I support and I've invested in as a legislator. At the same time, we have to create opportunity. There's no sickness like the loss of hope. When people lose hope, when, when, they, when they doubt that their life can be any longer or, or that they can uh, dream of something bigger than the street they live on. A lot of things can happen. I grew up in one of those neighborhoods, but I had a nurturing family and I benefited from good federal public policy, like the Head Start program, like Upward Bound, like Pell Grants and low interest student loans. And to invest in our children is to invest in our best resource. Senator Warnock, thank you. We are moving on, gentlemen, to the next uh, question. And this topic is about personal integrity, Buck. Yeah, we're going to shift gears a little bit here. Senator Warnock, in 2020, you tweeted this. Unemployment benefits have expired. Rent is due, and many Georgia families are at risk of eviction. My opponents are supposed to be serving the people in Washington, but they are clearly concerned with their own interests. Well, recent published reports say... Talk about a, a property that your church owns, Columbia Towers, at MLK Village in Atlanta. It's a home for the disadvantaged. At least a dozen lawsuits have been filed by residents evicted for not being able to pay their rent. Some of the outstanding balances are less than $30. As someone who receives more than $7,000 a month for a housing allowance from Ebenezer Baptist Church, how do you explain this to Georgia voters who are struggling currently to make ends meet? Well, let me say that serving in the United States Senate and continuing to serve my church is the honor of my life. And it gives me a lens through which to do the work that I'm doing. But here's why you know I'm running against a desperate candidate. Anytime a candidate would stoop to the level of trying to sully the name, he and his allies, to sully the name of Martin Luther King Jr.'s church and John Lewis's church, you know that's a desperate candidate. Let me tell you about my church. My church is a Matthew 25 church. We spend every week, every day feeding the hungry and the homeless. 
they know that those false charges that they've created are not true. We, we stand up for poor people every single day, and I ran for the Senate to do at a policy level what we do at a local level every single day. I'm not going to be distracted by him and his allies. My people know the truth. They know the work we do every single day, and I couldn't be prouder of them. Proud to represent the Senate and proud to serve at the needs of Baptist Church. So just to clarify, your position is that the allegations in these lawsuits are not true? I, I am saying that it is very obvious that my opponent and his allies are busy trying to sully Ebenezer Baptist Church. <laughs> Not that's, that's what I'm aware of. The truth. <laughs> Switching gears a little bit here, sir. Your, your ex-wife filed a lawsuit yes. asking for increased child support, saying that she had to pay for child care on days that your duties as a senator interfered with your parenting time and citing significant increases in your income. In 30 seconds, what is your response to that lawsuit? Listen, I, um, I went through a divorce, like a lot of people. And while that was a painful period, what came out of that was two amazing children that I just talked to before I came on the stage. And um, my children know that I am with them and for them and that I support them in every single way that a father does. Thank you, Senator Warnock. Now to you, Mr. Walker. Recent ads have highlighted allegations of past domestic violence. They've raised questions about how transparent you've been as far as your resume. In one minute, how do you respond to voters who question your integrity, both personally and professionally? Uh, first of all, uh, I've been very transparent, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. And I say I had a mental problem, and I'd be a champion for mental health because so many people suffer from mental health. But to have people like Senator Warnock that demonize mental health when I want to tell everyone out there, you can get help. Don't listen to Senator Warnock and his people. You can get help. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is ask. But the problem with the truth, you just saw it. You just saw it because he won't answer that about evicting the people from the church. And I told him I will pay that. I'll pay that salary. You're evicting them right now. We, we, have, have, we, have, time. Not, we have not evicted we have not evicted those. I didn't write the article. We, we, you, you're, you're, I didn't write the article. We, and most other people out there have my time. I'm okay with the discussion. If we start talking over yes. each other, we, we have, have not, we have not evicted the tenants. And, and he should take that money and pay it back to the veterans that he exploited while yeah, the tenants were running. To, and, uh, right. See, you can tell that he's not desperate because if he had read in that thing, he would have saw that I had nothing to do with that. But he is so desperate right now, he really wants that seat. He's now telling you, I didn't evict anyone. It is written in the paper. I didn't do this. Well, Senator, you did. And it's okay to speak the truth. Do not bear false witness, Senator. Do not bear false witness. Mr. Walker, to keep this moving, I want to follow up with you. You have been very open on your Mr. Uh, Senator Warnock, we need to move forward here. You have been very open about your struggles with mental illness, and you even wrote a book about dissociative, your diagnosis of disassociative uh, identity disorder. We recently asked if you were still receiving treatment, and, and this is what you had to say. No, that's all done, I, and you don't need to, and that's why I tell people. I think one thing I told people is I've been open about it, and I was open about it, what, 14 years ago. Mr. Walker, in 30 seconds, can you clarify this? Are you saying you no longer have disassociative identity disorder or is this something that you continue to this day to no manage? no you don't have to have treatment for it and i encourage people to continue to talk to people you know, i talk to my pastors i talk to my pastors and i continue to get help if i need help but i don't need any help i'm doing well but that's the reason why i tell anyone out there that is suffering from any type of mental illness you can get help all you got to do is ask, and I will always, always be a champion for mental health. And just to clarify, just to clarify, how can Georgia voters, though, be assured that this will not impact your ability to lead if elected? Because I'm ready to uh, lead today. I'm ready to vote with the Georgia voters, whereas Senator Warnock has voted with Joe Biden 96% of the time. I'm ready to vote with the Georgia voters today. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll move on to our next topic, Tina. And that topic, gentlemen, is health insurance. Georgia is one of 12 states that have not accepted federal funding to expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act. Mr. Walker, with more than 1.5 million Georgians uninsured, in one minute, 
Is it time for the federal government to step in to ensure all Georgians have access to health care? Well, right now, uh, people have coverage for health care. It's according to what type of coverage do you want? Because if you have an able-bodied job, you're going to have health care. But everyone else have health care is the type of health care you're going to get. And I think that is the problem. And what Senator Warnock want you to do is depend on the government. What I want you to do is get off the government health care and get on the health care he's got to get you a better health care. So that's what I'm trying to do to make you independent rather than dependent. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Senator Warnock, you have one minute. Uh, you've vowed to close the Medicaid gap by expanding access coverage uh, in the Affordable Care Act marketplace. So this comes with a $50 billion price tag, the national debt already at an all-time high. Where is this money coming from? You have 60, 60 seconds, sir. This is not a theoretical issue for me. When I think about health care, I think about Lori Davis, a trauma nurse in Covington, Georgia, who spent her career taking care of people. And then she got sick and she had to give up that job. And as she got sicker and sicker, she found herself without health care. She was one of the 600,000 Georgians in the Medicaid gap. She died for lack of health care. And so I ran saying that I would fight to expand Medicaid. Georgia needs to expand Medicaid. It costs us more not to expand. What we're doing right now is we're subsidizing health care in other states. Meanwhile, we've seen 10 hospitals in this state close, 10. And the Atlanta Medical Center right down the street from my church, where I visit my members, has announced that it's going to close. And so Georgia needs a senator who believes, like I do, that health care is a human right. And I will continue to fight until uh, the working class people, by the way, the folks who don't have health care, they work every single day. The folks who are in the gap, and I believe in the folks, in let, let me finish, let me finish. The, folks, the folks who Senator. are in the gap, the folks who are in the gap are the working poor. We are moving yeah. on, Senator Warnock. Listen, listen that Mr. Got, Walker, if I can yes. get your attention, please. In just a few weeks, Wellstar... Yes. will close its doors. This is Atlanta Medical Center, which uh, primarily serves patients in lower <laughs> income and minority communities. Hospitals nationwide are dealing with nursing shortages, doctor shortages in the wake of the pandemic. Mr. Walker, what measures can Congress enact to ensure everyone has access to hospitals and doctors? You have 30 seconds, sir. Well, first of all, Senator Warnock was correct that he believed in working with people, but he didn't do it because Governor Kemp has a plan that would have been a very good plan. But he stood by but Biden destroyed the plan. And he's talking about he believes in extension of it. He stood by it. But what the people can be assured of is I'm willing to meet with a uh, hospital administrator, meet with people rather than writing a letter. Because Senator Warnock waited till they made the decision and wrote a letter. And I said they don't need a pen pal, they need, they need solutions. We're moving on now, Senator Warnock. That same question to you, sir. What measures can Congress enact to where everyone has access to hospitals and doctors? You have 30 seconds. Well, clearly he doesn't have a solution. He, well, he I said I'll meet with the administrator. That's he, a solution. He said it, his, his solution is to meet. My solution is to pass legislation, which I've done. I got $4 billion in the American Rescue Plan to help the non-expansion states to do what they should have done to expand. They left that money on the table. Georgia left 600,000 Georgians in the Medicaid gap. And so I'm gonna keep standing up because people are literally dying for lack of health care. Dr. King said that of all the injustices, inequality in health care is the most shocking and the most inhumane. I agree with Dr. King. Thank you, Senator Warren. Now, Dr. Buck, now the next topic. Thank you, Tina. We're going to talk about foreign policy now. Russian President Vladimir Putin has threatened to use nuclear weapons in the conflict with Ukraine, prompting President Biden to claim that we are on the verge of Armageddon. Senator Warnock, if nuclear weapons are used, how should the United States respond? You have 60 seconds. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm glad that we're standing up to Putin's aggression. And we have to continue to stand up, which is why I stood up to the Biden administration when it suggested that we should close the Savannah Combat Readiness Training Center. I told the president that was the exact wrong thing to do at the exact wrong time. 
and I'm glad that I was able to stand up with Congressman Buddy Carter and others, and we kept that training center open. I've seen up close what those service members do. They are the tip of the spear, and we have to make sure that our service members know that we have their back. We have to strengthen our allies and the NATO alliance as we've done, and make sure we stand up to Russian aggression. Nothing could be more important. Mr. Walker, the same question to you. If nuclear weapons are used, how should the U.S. respond? You have well, first of all, you talked about standing up. You didn't stand up to Chuck Schumer when you could have got a helicopter uh, company here of almost a billion dollars. You let it go to New York. You didn't stand up then. You didn't stand up to Biden when he left American uh, people and had 13 military soldiers killed in Afghanistan. You didn't stand up then. So what we can do is Putin is a bully. And the way you be the bully, show strength. Well, Senator, why not say he stood up? He not stood up to Biden. If he was standing up, he wouldn't have voted with him 96% of the time, which gave us an it gave us an open border, which gave us high inflation, which gave us crime in the streets. And he's talking about standing up. He didn't stand up. He had laid down every time it came around. And you, and you know that, Senator. It, it is evident that he has a point that he tries to make time and time again. I've stood up to the Biden administration so they could keep open this combat training readiness center, stood with our congressional delegation to do that. I've worked across the aisle time and time to get good things done for the people of Georgia. I worked with a senator from Texas to bail out I-14. I worked with a Republican senator from Alabama to help Georgia farmers get their products to market. I will work with anyone and stand up against anybody I need to stand up against to get good things done for Georgia. I work for the people of Georgia. We need to move forward to our next that. topic, gentlemen. We're, our time is running short. Both of you have strong backing from your respective parties. Senator Warnock, a simple yes or no here. You, you'll, will, you will have a chance to explain, but I'd like a simple yes or no. Would you support President Biden running for a second term in 2024? I've not spent a minute thinking about what politicians should run for what in 2024. Is that a yes I, or no? I, the answer is I have not. And, and, and maybe this is difficult. Maybe this is difficult for people to understand because that's how politicians think. I, I think that part of the problem with our politics right now is that it's become too much about the politicians. You're asking me who's going to run in 24? The people of Georgia get to decide who's going to be their senator in three days, Monday. And I hope they'll show up and vote. And I'd be honored to represent them in the Senate. You haven't thought about it. If you can think about it now, in 2024, the president will turn 82 years old. Are you concerned about his physical and his mental the, the, fitness at that time? The, you have 30 seconds. The people of Georgia hired me to represent them, regardless of who's in the White House. I'm, I'm honored to do that job every single day. My dad said, if somebody hires you to do a job, do the job they hired you to do. They didn't hire me to be a pundit. And I'm working every single day for hardworking families in Georgia, for our women, for our workers, and for kids like me growing up in places like Cape Gnomes. Mr. Walker, former President Trump is also considering a run for the White House in 2024. If you can give me a simple yes or no answer, and we'll give you time to explain as well, would you support a Trump 2024 run? Yes, I would. And let me tell you, though, President Trump is my friend. It has nothing to do with, has nothing to do with that. He's my friend. I won't uh, leave my allies which is what Senator Warnock and Joe Biden did in Afghanistan. They left their allies. They left their allies, and right now on a foreign stage, a lot of these people don't trust us no more. They don't trust us to be strong anymore. So they're waiting to see who's going to stand up, who's going to trust. And, I, and I, they have no one to trust right now because I said President Trump is my friend, and he won't stand up with Biden when yet he's voted with him 96% of the time. Let's be real. <laughs> Mr. Walker, are you concerned about the ongoing legal investigations around the country and including here in Georgia? You have 30 seconds. Well, first of all, I would hope that Senator Warnock, he and myself being people of color, would want the scales of justice to have not have a hand on it. We want the Lady Justice to be blind, but in this instance here, Lady Justice is not blind. And I said, right now, with everything that is going on, 
What I like to do is get to what's important. What's important is protecting the border. What's important is protecting people on the street. What's important is getting this inflation down. Not what's going on there in Washington, talking about whether President Trump is guilty or not guilty. What I want to do is see due process, which is what I hope Senator Warnock and myself would love to see. Changing topics now, we're going to move forward just to give you guys both an update that you may want to know. Although the news is not great if you're a Braves fan, right now they're in the top of the ninth inning, Game 3, National League Division Series, down 9-1 to the Phillies. Not a great night for the Braves. Just a few weeks ago, the World Series champs, though, they did visit the White House. Their visit sparked a renewed debate about the team's name and their signature tomahawk chop. Mr. Walker, do you believe the Braves should rethink their name, their logo, or their signature cheer? You have 30 seconds. Not at all. You know, uh, right now, we have too many other things to be concerned about. We have uh, people dying on the streets in Atlanta, around the country. We have people living paycheck to paycheck, can't afford food to put on their table, can't afford gas. We have uh, Putin out there. We have China out there. We can't be concerned about whether the Braves going to change their name. We need to be concerned about saving this country. We need to be concerned about saving the Georgia people. We need to be concerned about giving people a right to live the liberties and freedom that the Constitution of the United States guaranteed them to have. Senator Warnock, the same question to you in regards to the Braves. Do you think, think they should rethink their name, their logo, or their signature cheer? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm praying for the Braves right about now. Uh, they, they, they've got a ways to go here. Uh, listen, the, the management of the Braves is meeting with our tribes, and they're having a conversation about this. And I know the folks over at the Braves organization, and I trust that they and the tribes that they're talking to will come to a place that makes sense for all involved. Senator Warnock, we're going to go ahead and continue. We're going to get a few more questions in tonight. Senator Warnock, some of your Senate colleagues have called for expanding the number of seats on the Supreme Court. In 15 seconds, quickly, sir, would you support this? What I, what I support. <clears throat> Expanding Listen, the seats on the Supreme I, Court. I think that my job as a senator is to protect the rights of ordinary citizens. And for the first time, perhaps in my lifetime, we've seen those rights contract rather than expand. Whether we're talking about the reproductive rights of women or voting rights. And I'm going to do everything I can to protect the rights of the citizens of Georgia. Thank you, Senator Warnock. Mr. Walker, would you support expanding the number of seats on the Supreme Court? In 15 well, seconds, sir. Yes, when you get in Washington, you have to become a leader. Being a leader, you have to make tough, tough uh, decisions. And you see on that answer there, he really didn't give you an answer. So my answer is no, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Now we have reached the point for final moments of this debate. A chance for your closing remarks. You, and you have 60 seconds. Each have 60 seconds to answer. And Senator Warner, if you have the floor first. Well, thank you so very much, Georgia. It's wonderful uh, to be here. Listen, uh, in this state, we have uh, nearly 11 million people. And only two people get to represent us in the United States Senate, just two. And when I think about that, it is an awesome responsibility. One that humbles me and inspires me to work as hard as I can for hardworking families every single day. And I've worked with Democrats and Republicans in order to do that work. These are difficult times. These are dark times. But the scripture says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness overcometh it not. I'm honored to represent you in the Senate. I hope that you'll show up to vote early beginning Monday. I'd be honored to have your vote. God bless you. Keep your faith. Mr. Walker, you're coming for closing statements, and you have 60 seconds as well. For those of you who are concerned about uh, uh, voting for me, a uh, non-politician, I want you to think about the damage politicians like Joe Biden and Raphael Warnock had done to this country. I want you to think about Raphael Warnock, what he said today. And I said he was going to try to give you some smooth talk and tell you what's happening. What's happening is this country is hurting. What's happening is we need leaders. So what I want to say to you, Senator, why not, is I want to thank you. I want to thank you for this. But at the same time, I want to say Georgia need leaders. They need leaders that's going to stand up for them. So let's think about if we give Senator Warnock six more years, think of what this country will become. I'm not sure if we can make up for that. 
Gentlemen, so I said you. vote for Herschel Walker. Thank you both, gentlemen. That's going to conclude our debate for this evening. Before we leave tonight, though, I want to remind voters that early voting begins in Georgia on Monday. It will run through November 4th. Election Day is November 8th. Candidates, thank you. And we, of course, want to thank Plant Riverside District uh, Kessler Election Property for this venue to broadcast this debate. We appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. We hope you have a great night.